I want to make love to Rick Wright. I want Rich Davis to make love to Rick Wright. That would be the best porno. I would, I'm going to rent that in my room upstairs later. The Rick Wright, Rich Davis porno. That, that's seven figures right there. That's major market. That's nice. I was talking to Rick Wright earlier, and I felt like I had a massage just talking to him. He just he smooths you out when he talks to you, you know. That was cool. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I had no idea I was going to be standing here tonight until I was on the plane on the way up today. Uh, David said, hey, come up to Syracuse. It'll be great. By the way, I, I don't like how this podium is because I feel like you guys are, like, screwed over here. And you're like, oh, the first class section. Uh, so I'll try to do this. So on the way up... Uh, David says, by the way, you, you need to stand up and say some things tonight. I was like, shit, what are you doing to me? So I don't have any big speech. I'm, I'm not going to go long, I swear to you. If I go too long, you'll snore, and I'll, I'll get off the stage. Uh, on the way up, I was thinking, okay, well, you know, it's, it's a college alumni thing, college students. It, it shouldn't be that difficult. But after what I've seen today, what I experienced when I visited Z89 and what I've heard and felt tonight, I am honored and I am humbled to be part of this, this organization. I feel like I'm a member. Right. I, uh, if, if Z100 in New York had an alumni slash current employee banquet, you wouldn't have this many people in the room and you wouldn't have this much heart in the room. You have something going on here. I hope you never take it for granted. I've never seen anything like this. I'm truly excited about this. Uh, I read the Wall Street Journal and hear my, my bosses complain and bitch and moan every day about how it's all going down the, the toilet. But when I, when I feel the energy of what's happening and what could happen from what's happening in this room, I'm okay. I, I'm going to be growing old and salivating on the front porch one day, and you guys are going you're gonna to pay, <laughs> pay for my keep and... This is the future of radio. Or, or, I don't know if it's still going to be on a transmitter, on a satellite, or if it's just going to be on the Internet or on, a, on the cell phones. I don't know where the hell it's going. All I know is we are the heart of whatever is going to come out of whatever box it's going to end up on. And I am so pleased to be here. And I, I, I can't thank you enough for, for letting me be here. Uh, I'm burping up the victory, by the way. The, the, where, where would we go? To the, where would we go? The varsity. I'm burping that shit up. It's <laughs> oh, my God. I had the RB sandwich, the roast beef, you know, with the... <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to tell you what I did when I got to my room today. It was just nasty. The varsity, man. Typically, uh, morning guys from my era are fat, balding, and wear Hawaiian shirts. I, I'm two out of three tonight. I gave up the Hawaiian shirts just to try to end that. But I was molested by radio at a very early age. <laughs> I grew up in Dallas, Texas, listening to a uh, bunch of people you've never heard of. Who, give, who cares? But what I loved about radio, because I was a social misfit, like I'm sure I have that in common with every radio person in this room. Maybe we were a little awkward when it came to dealing with others. I don't know. I grew up listening to the radio, and I just... I was in love with how the people on the air painted pictures and they told stories and they did these great contests where the afternoon guy raced the morning guy around the world and they would call in from these foreign countries and have to pick up things you know, in Russia to prove they were there. And, and later on in life I found out that was all staged, it was all phony. But when I was growing up hearing it, I was totally thrilled by what radio can do. Radio can do... In, in step with what David was saying, what TV cannot do. When you watch a TV show, it's all made up for you. You don't have to guess what they look like. They're there. You don't have to guess what the house looks like or what they're wearing because you see it. In radio, we can use words to paint pictures. And, uh, and we can take people on a ride that, that you can't take them on when you're on TV and staring at them. And I, I was so... At an early age, I learned radio was for me. I love the music. I love the technology. I love, you know, whatever. Got a job. Uh, my background, real quick. I won't bore you too much. But a little bit. I'm going to bore you a little bit. Just a little bit. I uh, got a job when I was 14 years old. 30 years ago. It was 30 years ago this, this month, actually, probably. Uh, running the Dallas Cowboy game on a little bitty station north of Dallas. KMMK McKinney. The spirit of Collin County. Uh, no listeners whatsoever. None. 
And uh, what a great place to learn radio, though. Uh, when I was 15, they put me on the air. I, I actually, to prove to myself that people were listening, I, I, I offered $50 to the second caller. No one called. No one called. <laughs> <laughs> no one. I kid you not. The guy who owned it was this cheap bastard named C.R. Graham. God bless him. I don't know where he is now. He used to pay us in cash when he could afford to pay us. Rick, see, you were around during these days. Radio stations weren't owned by big companies back then. They were, it was like the, the budget of a garage sale. And, and I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. It was awful. But it was where we learned our craft. And that's where I got to learn about the radio person. People in radio back then were weird, weird people. And it hasn't changed. But back then, I mean, we had DJs living in their cars. They wouldn't take baths for weeks. They'd bring their girlfriends up to the station, and they'd pick up more girlfriends on the request line. Rich Davis knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> the Holland, uh, Holland uh, Tunnel Inn. You've been there, right? The Holland, Inn, Holland Tunnel Motel. Is that where you took them? Okay. <laughs> Not kidding. Radio was one of those places where uh, on Sunday morning, they always had a big fat guy that, r that ran the Sunday morning programming. We called it the God Squad because it was religious programming. You had to play it. The government made you play the religious programming. And he, he would sit in that chair with his sweaty butt for five or six hours and just queue up tapes. And so whoever had to come on the air after him had to sit in that stinky chair. So back then, radio stations smelled like ass. Pardon me. Radio station smelled like stale smoke, right, Rick? Yeah. There was a smell of the equipment, which was, it wasn't digital back then. It was all tubes. It smelled like dusty ele electricity or something. And uh, there was pot smoke at Rick stations, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't dare sit down on the, uh, the couch in the DJ lounge because the DNA collected in the cushions would confuse any... Scientists around the world. Rich Davis knows that. Rich. But that's where I learned. I'm sad to say I did not complete college because at one time I had a choice to go work full time in radio or to continue my college education. My parents begged me to try radio and, and I was good at it, I guess. So I, 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 I did not finish college. I didn't even work in the college radio station. Why the hell do you want me here? I don't know. Uh, I'm jealous that I could not take part in what you are all a part of now. And I, I say that with all, all my heart. This is an amazing, amazing uh, board, uh, diving board that you're, you're jumping on. And you can bounce really high and take a dive into whatever is out there. And don't let these people tell you there's nothing out there. And what Dano was explaining to you earlier, that his, his idea is to get in there and tell these companies you'll do more than on-air work, you'll do anything. That is the way to go. He is so right on. Dano, you really hit the nail on the head with that. And you know, when, when David and I formed this, this company uh, to syndicate our morning show, we knew that well, there are other morning shows being syndicated. What could we do to make a difference? So we went to them with marketing ideas. We went to them with, with sales ideas. We went to them with a client or two worth millions of dollars uh, and potential uh, revenues for them. And they were like, come on, where do you want to do? Sign on the dotted line. That would not have happened had we not gone the extra mile, which is what you have to do, which is fine. Radio has become lazy. People who show up for their four and they hit the door, as we used to call it, you show up and you play your, your same songs over and over and you say some stupid crap in the microphone that means nothing to anyone. It just flies out into space and means nothing. And you go home and collect your paycheck. Well, that's why radio sucks in a lot of markets, a lot of radio stations. Uh, unfortunately, because of the corporate condition, radio started to suck for me. I, started, I used to work in little little crap hole radio stations where you, you the only way to get a, a colorful colorful redo of the, of the radio station was to have a food fight I mean ketchup on the wall was the only way to redo the walls in these places but that was cool that was great well the companies took over moved five or six or 15 friggin radio stations into one hallway we went from these little rickety houses and mobile homes with transmitters out back to these big, beautiful glass buildings with key card entry and parking spaces and, and all this bullshit. And I will tell you now, it killed radio. Uh, 